So every week I send my community two different emails and on my first email is 40,000 people and I get an average open rate of about 30% with that email newsletter. My second email newsletter has about 7,000 people on the list and the average open rate for that newsletter is over 60%. So just to give you an idea in case you're not aware, the average open rate for the industry, the sort of the industry standard is around 21%. So having open rates of above 30%, above 60% uh, means that I know a thing or two about how to get people to open, read and enjoy my weekly newsletters. And today what I want to do in my little mini training is talk to you about how to do exactly that, which is how to get people to actually open and read your newsletter. So how to actually write an email newsletter that people start to look forward to each week that they want to open and that they want to read. So that's what we're going to be talking about. If you are new here, I offer mini trainings like this regularly on the topics of growing an online business. So if that sounds of interest, welcome. And and I have other in, uh, videos on the channel that you may find interesting on this topic. I'm a very casual teacher. We're gonna go through lots of different tips and tricks. I have my iPad here, so I'll be looking down to just make sure I remember to tell you everything today and I'm sort of producing on the go using my little stream deck over here as well. So we are going to get stuck into our little mini training. So as I said, topic we are discussing today is how to write a newsletter that people will open and read. And I've got 10 particular tips, 10 particular strategies that we are going to address. So let's get stuck into them. The first strategy is to choose a topic. Now this all sounds really boring and everything always starts with choose a topic, choose a niche. So I know you've heard all of this before, but it is important to, before you start writing your newsletter, just think about what it is that you're actually going to be trying to deliver. What value are you trying to give people with your email newsletter? So you don't wanna just be writing about random things each week because what you're trying to do is actually get people to come and join your newsletter and then provide them with a whole bunch of different information that they are um, going to use to solve the problems that they have with that particular topic. So the reason I have two newsletters myself is because of this exact thing. So I have sort of two communities that I work with. The first community is sort of interior designers, architects, and people like that who run design businesses. And so they have a particular set of interests about running their design business, about um, interior design, about architecture, and about all of those sorts of things. So one of my newsletters, the one that gets the 60% open rate, is for that uh, group of people. My second group of people that I talk to have more interest in online business, in growing an online business, um, and just in sort of general business knowledge as well. So a lot of my designers are on that newsletter as well, but then there's a whole bunch of other people on that newsletter who have nothing to do with design. And so that email newsletter sticks to the topic of business. So one of them's called Design Notes, the other one's called Business Notes, and I'm very clear and specific about the two different types of information that I share in each of the different newsletters. So instead of just combining and mixing and mingling everything into the one newsletter, which means that, you know, some people would be finding it sort of boring or not relevant to them each week. I've really been quite clear about what's in each of the two newsletters and really stick to that topic. So that is point one. And the first important thing that you should be thinking about, what is the topic that your newsletter is gonna be about? What are the problems that people have about that topic that you can help them with? And how are you going to sort of address that in your newsletter? So that's the first thing. The second tip I've got for creating a newsletter that people will open and read is to actually publish your newsletter at the same time and the same day each week so that people start to sort of get that habit and work out from you when your newsletter is gonna come out because that gives them a sort of um, way of this being part of their weekly routine. So I have been sending my newsletters on a Tuesday for that design notes one and on a Friday for the business notes one and I send it out at two o'clock Sydney time time and I rarely miss that time. So I actually never miss the newsletter itself, but in terms of the time frame, every now and then I might be a few hours late with one of them for whatever reason, having a busy day or something's happened with the kids or whatever it might be. And I can tell you that my uh, community are so well trained, if you like, um, that my newsletter comes out at such a specific time each week that if I am late by a few hours, sometimes my hardcore 
fans or community supporters or friends or whatever you want to call them, um, write to me and say, have I missed the newsletter for this week? It hasn't come. And that's what you want to do. You want to have the excitement and the people so excited to read and open your newsletter and have be packed full of that much value that they actually really enjoy opening it and they miss it if you don't uh, send it at the time and day that you say that you're going to each week. So definitely set a um, time and a day that you are going to send it and then as much as possible, try and stick to that so that people get used to the routine of that. So that was um, point two. Point three is to have a framework. Now, this is one of the ways that I've been able to be really, really consistent with sending my newsletter for many years now because I have a framework that I use to send my newsletter in. So um, I've had a few different frameworks over the years of things that I've done, but at the moment, my frameworks for both newsletters are exactly the same. Both of them are five different links, articles, um, resources, whatever it might be, just five quick things. So um, just five bullets, if you like. So five design notes, five business notes. That's why I've called the newsletters those things. In the past, I had one newsletter. I didn't have the two different split out newsletters and that one was called 321 Weekend. And I used to send three pieces of advice around the topic of running a design business. Two things I was loving that week. So that was like two just resources or podcasts or books or something I'd purchased or something I'd read or whatever it might be. So two resources that I'd really enjoyed during the week and one action step that they could take during the week. So that framework was called 321 Weekend. Now I've got my five notes for five uh, notes for, uh, on the business business notes and five uh, design notes. And so again, I've got a framework that I fit all of my content into. It makes it so much easier to have a framework because every week you otherwise are just going to sit down and have a completely blank piece of paper that you then have to fill in with like, what am I going to write this week? And what am I going to talk about and things? So if you've got a framework, then in the back of your mind, as you go through your week, you think, okay, this might actually be something really good that can go in my newsletter on the weekend. So, or on Friday or on whatever day that you send it. So it's just something that if you've got that framework, Framework, you know, to be preparing yourself and to be thinking of ideas for things that can go into your newsletter on the um, as you move through your week. So that is point number three, which is to have a framework. Point number four is to have a template. So once you've worked out what your framework is, make sure to set up a template in your email management system. So I use ConvertKit for this and I might even on the page here somewhere put up what my templates look like. But basically I can open up, I just click on a button to start a new template or a new email newsletter and the whole template will pre-populate. So all I've got to do is just plug in the information. All of the stuff that is standard to each of the email newsletters each week is all just automatically populated into that template. So I'm not repeating work over and over. And as a result, of that, I can actually write my email newsletters in about half an hour to an hour, just depends on you know the type of content that's in it that day, but definitely under an hour for each of them. So it might sound like a lot, but actually for the value I get and the value I give to my community, an hour a newsletter is not a lot of time. And that's partly because of the framework that I've got, which was the previous point, and also having this template set up and ready to go. So I never have to start with a blank page and I never have to repeat the same types of tasks over and over over again. My next tip for you is to make it easy to read. So this is all about your copywriting and what you put into your newsletter. So don't write just paragraphs and walls of text. They become sort of very overwhelming for a reader. People on your newsletter, on your email subscriber list are very busy. Everyone's very busy. We're all very busy. And so if someone opens up this email every week, and they see thousands of words in huge chunky paragraphs, all that does to them is that they think this is just hard work and they'll just close out of it and they may not open your newsletter again in the future. So instead of that, make it really easy to consume and much more importantly, really easy to skim so that people can just skim through your notes, skim through your email and have a look at what's in there. And then they can sort of go deeper and read in more depth the stuff that looks like it's going to be interesting to them and just skim over the rest of it. Ideas for how to do this is to do use things like bullet points, emojis, 
um, short sentences, break up paragraphs into much shorter paragraphs, uh, use um, links out to longer articles. So if instead of you talking like and rambling about a long paragraph, you could link out to something where you go into more depth on that. So if people want to read more about it, they could link out to it. So make it just really easy um, and not overwhelming for your readers to have to consume. So that's point number five. Point number six is your content capture, your ideas capture. So as we were talking about, if you've got a template and a, um, a framework in your mind as you move through your week, it makes it so much easier to put your newsletter together at the end of the week or whenever you're gonna be doing your particular newsletter. I have a whole other video, a whole other mini training which I've done on how to capture content ideas and newsletters are a piece of your content. So all of the ideas that I've got in that other mini training, definitely go and have a look at those because those will be 100% relevant to how you can capture some ideas to include in your newsletter as well. But I am the sort of person who is always consuming new information. And as a result of that, I've got lots of ideas through the week. I also listen to lots of podcasts and read lots of books and um, write, read lots of blog posts and all sorts of things. So throughout the week and in that other video, I explain the sort of system that I use to capture all of this. I will be capturing on the go things that are um, going to be great to be shared into my newsletter. So having that framework just means that as you are thinking of things, as you're consuming things you like, I really enjoyed that podcast. I'd love to share that with my community in my weekly newsletter. That's already one of my five points down and that's as simple as your newsletter creation can be. So uh, have a system to capture your ideas. If you don't have any ideas about how to have a system for capturing your ideas, definitely go and check out that other mini training because I go in depth into that in that and I don't want to waste your time by repeating what I already said in that particular training. Number seven is to make it personal. So if you have a framework, I have a framework, I've got those five points for five design notes and five business notes, but I have a little bit of time or a little bit of space at the beginning of my newsletters where I talk about me and I share a little bit about what's been going on in my business, what's been going on personally for me, what I've been sort of working on, um, some of the challenges or good things that have been happening. And I let my community into the sort of behind the scenes of what I've been doing because they are very keen to um, know a little bit about who's behind writing this newsletter newsletter. If you just make it sort of five points and off they go, that's great. They'll probably get some value out of that, but that's not going to help them to build a connection with you. So people in my community build a very strong connection with me because I do share a lot about sort of the behind the scenes of what's going on with me and some of the things that I've been working through. So do make sure that no matter what and whatever framework you're using, that you do actually share some stuff about you. But in the context, again, of what people we are, are there so for example, in my business notes one, it's generally things about me and the behind the scenes, but it's behind the scenes of how I'm building my own business. So it'll be something that I might've tried and it hasn't worked, or it might be something that I've tried and it's worked really well, or like it might be something that I've created for them and now I'm telling them about it or whatever it might be. So they're getting to know me, but it's still in the context of that business framework, that business topic that I've picked for the newsletter. So do make sure that you let people get to know you in your newsletter because they do want to get to know you. People want to make a connection with you. So definitely make sure that you do that. And that is point number seven. Point number eight is to get them involved. So this is a very quick little easy tip. So as your newsletter uh, subscribers grow, as your list starts to grow, definitely get them involved in the other sorts of content and stuff that they would like to hear from you. So ask them poll, uh, send polls to them or ask them to email back to you and say, you know, what else would you love to hear from me or ask for feedback on what you've been sharing or ask a question in your newsletter. You will get email responses. So if you're the sort of person who doesn't want to have a lot of email responses and as your newsletter gets bigger, you can sometimes end up with a lot of email responses. I then find that stressful because I'm the kind of person who then likes to write to every single person who writes to me and I read and write all of my emails personally. So that means that can be a lot of extra work for me. So I read recently wrote an email newsletter where I sort of was a bit more vulnerable and sharing some stuff about my brain surgery and some things like that, that I've just had. And I sort of wrote a whole bunch of stuff like that. I had literally hundreds of responses from people. And because I feel like they've spent their time writing to me and spending their time writing and saying lovely things, I always feel like uh, a responsibility to write back. Now, as my email list continues to grow, I won't be able to probably keep doing that. But at the moment I try and do that. So 
I love to have that in, um, involvement and response and everything from my community, but just be aware that that can become a little bit overwhelming as your list grows. But while your list's small, make the most of building those connections with people and building those relationships. I've made so many like great online friends and people I've collaborated on things with and I go for lunches with people I've met through my email newsletter and online and things like that. So you can form some really fantastic friendships and um, colleagues and all sorts of things by just opening up and seeking their response and getting them involved. So that is point number eight. Point number nine is sort of what we've already talked about. So we've talked about sending your newsletter on a specific day and at a specific time. But really what I'm saying here is to just show up at the time that you say you're gonna show up. So basically, if you have said to them, I'm gonna send you a weekly newsletter, don't send them a newsletter one week and then wait four weeks and send them another newsletter. You need to then show up and send them a newsletter every single week. That is the commitment that you've made to them. and you need to then keep that commitment because otherwise people just aren't going to build that trust with you. They're going to be like, well, she said she was gonna send an email newsletter. And while people aren't really paying that much attention to you and they actually really don't care if you don't send your newsletter, especially if it's not very good, the more you sort of um, show up as a person that can be trusted with them, that shows up when they say they're going to show up, it just in the back of their mind builds up the um, fact that sort of know, like, and trust factor that we're all trying to build with our com online community. So, if you're saying that you're gonna write a weekly newsletter, write a weekly newsletter. So when you're thinking about the frequency of when you're gonna send your newsletter, when you're first setting it up, make sure you can uh, send it and stick to the schedule or the um, sort of posting schedule that you say you're going to do. Don't try and over commit yourself and then not send it. You're much better off saying, I'm gonna send a newsletter every two weeks and then do that or once a month to start with and then do that and make sure you always do that. So I think the weekly frequency is really good. I think once a month can be like enough time for people to go, who is this person again? Like, and then just unsubscribe and delete you. If you're, they're hearing from you every single week and you're providing them with lots of value, then I think that's just a really good, um, consistency and frequency to be sending to your community. So that's point number nine, which is to show up and just do the things that you say you're going to do. I also um, have a backup newsletter set up in my ConvertKit account so that if for whatever reason my days go pear-shaped or something happens, I do have a completely finished newsletter with some sort of evergreen content in there. So it doesn't matter if it's like not from that specific week, and I can always get that out in about five minutes if I need to. So that's definitely something to think about in the back of your mind as well, just so that you can keep that showing up and coming in consistently. And I've luckily never had to use that, but it is always sitting there and it just gives me that peace of mind that if I, for whatever reason, run into a drama and can't get my newsletter out with some original content that I write that week, then I've always got that back up just sitting there and ready to go. So that's something else to just consider. We are now at the final point, the final tip that I've got for you, which is to just finish off by always asking yourself a question about your email newsletter. And the question is, would this email newsletter be something that I would really enjoy getting in my inbox every week, if you're gonna send a weekly one? Would I open it? Would I read it? Would I enjoy it or would I unsubscribe from it? So if you think your email might be something that you would just think is a little bit rubbish and not very valuable and you might unsubscribe from, from or it might be annoying you or like whatever it might be, then maybe just rethink, rethink your strategy. I always am asking myself this. I'm always reevaluating it. It's one of the reasons I moved from that three, two, one weekend framework that I used to have to the one that I've got now where I've got those five bullets because I think that the five bullets is much easier to consume. I've had that feedback from my community now saying they much prefer this new format. I changed my template. I made it much more readable. I'm using many more emojis. I'm making it look a little bit more fun. It's much easier to skim read, um, all sorts of things. So I'm always questioning myself, would this be like a fun, great email that I would really enjoy getting on a Friday or a Tuesday, which is when I send out my emails. And you should definitely be asking yourself that guiding question consistently with your email newsletter as well. If you think it's a bit average, if you think it's like could be better, then put in the effort to work out how you can make that happen. Another great way of doing that is to just sign up for a lot of newsletters and think to yourself, 
which of these newsletters am I enjoying? Which ones am I opening? Which ones do I delete? Which ones do I look forward to getting? Um, and then just taking notice of the factors and the things about those newsletters that you really enjoy. Because if you enjoy them, there's a high chance that other people are enjoying them as well. And then take some of those ideas and apply them to your own newsletter as well. So those are my 10 tips. Now, where's my, there we go. So in summary, we have looked at the 10 tips for how you can write a newsletter that people are excited about and that they open and read every single week so that you can look forward to getting really good open rates like I am lucky enough to have with my email newsletters as well. So we looked at uh, sticking to a topic, publishing at a regular day and time, having a framework that you use, having a template set up so that you don't have to ever start from a blank page, making it easy to read with that skimmable emojis and bullet points and easy to read content, making sure you've got a way to capture your ideas as you have them through the week or capture the content you're consuming so that you've got it ready to share and make sure to go and watch that mini training that I've got for you on how to always come up with content ideas because that should be really helpful for you. Make your newsletter personal, make sure there is some personal information in there. It's not just like links and things that um, don't let people get to know you. Get them involved in your newsletter, ask them what they wanna hear from you, encourage them to write to you and build connection with them through email. Show up for them when you say you're going to show up. And then of course, that one last point that I had for you, which is to always ask yourself that guiding question of whether your email would be something that you would open, read, enjoy from you each week. So they are my top 10 tips for creating a newsletter that people open and read. Now, speaking of newsletters, I've talked about my two newsletters, which I have discussed throughout this video, which is my design notes newsletter and my business notes newsletter. I will link to both of those in the description box below for you. So if you have in, any interest in either of those, make sure to sign up for those and I send them every week and I will continue to send them every week. So you will be able to hear from me with that extra content from me each week. Make sure to check out my other mini trainings on my YouTube channel here because I try to do other different mini trainings for you guys on all different topics of how to grow and scale an online business, which is what I have done myself and something that I'm very passionate about. So definitely go and check those other videos out and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed because I will be bringing out other mini trainings like this in the future. So that's today's video. I hope you got some value out of that. I hope you now are feeling enthusiastic about writing a great newsletter for your community. And I will catch you in my next mini training. Bye for now.